I'm the do do doing the dangy. So that you might do the dangy too. <laughs> Listen to me, jaws going click tick clack. <laughs> Always got some other dangy's hand up me back. <laughs> Cause I'm do 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 doing the dangy. Hello, dangy. Kids certainly do grow up fast these days. Although I'm beginning to worry about my daughter. Last night she came home with a yo-yo. <laughs> I think his name was Brian. <laughs> no, that was a joke. I mean, a real yo-yo. She left it on the sideboard. I had to have a sneaky go. <laughs> I used to have one, you know. I knew all the tricks, flying saucers. <laughs> Walk the dog. <laughs> Stun the cat. <laughs> I had a hula hoop too. Yeah. All the kids on our estate had hula hoops. Theirs were hollow plastic. Mine was solid metal. <laughs> uh, my dad made it for me at Leyland Mortars. <laughs> he smuggled it out through the works gates. Past security. With a stick. Still, I was pretty good with it. <coughs> 1,001, 1,002. Yo-yo going at the same time. Outside and inside the hoop. <laughs> yeah. Nah, but all that was a long time ago. I like to think I'm more mature now. <laughs> <sighs> but when you think about it, there's been some really strange crazies over the years. There was an outbreak of those antennae things. Balls on springs. Wobble when you move your head. Dealy boppers they were called. And people used to wear them at parties years ago. But there's one party that's only just caught on to them. The Labour Party. Butlers really give us street cred. <laughs> right on, Neil. Who me fuck you, fuck you. Right first begin like we did last summer. Come on, right first begin like we. Come on, join in, Neil. Come on, join in. Oh, Mr. Baseman, I think you're really with it. Oh, Mr. Baseman, I want to be a baseman too. Now you, Roy. And skateboards, they made a big impact. But I always thought they were wasted on kids. I mean, the police force has been crying out for years and years for more mobility. <laughs> I say every cop on the beach should have his own board. A white one with an orange stripe down the side. <laughs> and a little flashing blue light on the front. <laughs> yeah, court cases would certainly be different. Young cop standing in the dock. Board under his arm. <laughs> Whilst uh, proceeding down our street, rolling at approximately 15 miles an hour, I noticed the, um, the, uh, the um, defendant soliciting outside the solicitors, whereupon I promptly did a wheelie. <laughs> and a rather spectacular kick turn, if I may say so. 
And whilst approaching her, it, uh, she uh, revealed that she had uh, nothing on under her fur coat. And, and, and then I... And, and, and then I... Oh, just on with it, Perkins! And, and then I went straight through Burton's window, your worship. <laughs> Did you ever get one of those sticky octopuses that walks down walls? I did. Took it to a seafood restaurant. Yeah, a high-class joint. Enjoy your meal, sir. Yes, thank you. It's very nice. Thank you. Anyone of his street? <laughs> Come on, let's see a show of... Uh, 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 no, forget it. Okay, anybody ever run street? Run through a nudist camp fully clothed. It's a similar feeling, uh, I imagine. I wonder if anyone's ever street on a skateboard. Work in a hula hoop. <laughs> Yo-yo going at the same time. <laughs> Wobbling the daily boppers. A spitting sticky octopi. <laughs> <laughs> Try it, you might get a spot on Blue Peter. <laughs> You'll definitely get a spot on the last resort. <laughs> the last with all? Come on, come on, there's nothing trivial about the last with all. <laughs> For instance, here sitting beside me tonight is my extra special guest, Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Winner of the Nobel Peace Prize, champion of the oppressed, a shining example to us all. Right, Titch, where do you buy your sandals? <laughs> Jonathan Ross, he's a dedicated follower of fashion. I'm not. No, I've no interest in clothes whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, the ones I wore on the last series, I got them from the BBC uh, wardrobe department. You've probably seen them before. In Tenko. <laughs> yeah. But when it comes to buying clothes, you know, I think that those army surplus type stores are as good as anywhere. Huh? I mean, although, I mean, their image needs a bit of a boost, right? I, th I think they should open a glamour section in there. Uh, <laughs> full of erotic but practical garments. Like peekaboo donkey jackets. And, and baby doll waterproofs. And, and bondage wellies. Mind you, they've already got those. A little bit of string in between. Cheers, ma'am, a daffodil. <laughs> My wife persuaded me to buy some of those really baggy pants that came out a while back. Loads of excess material. <laughs> Looked like a frock from a distance. <laughs> yeah, with designer braces over a brightly spotted coloured shirt. I went out in the next day and there's all these kids following me down the road. Hey, mister, take us for a Big Mac. You know. <laughs> To be honest, I'm happy to wear the first thing that falls out the wardrobe. A pair of flares fell out last week. Oh. Flares. <laughs> My wife said, if you say flares, Phil, people don't, don't know what the hell you're talking about. Anyway, this pair of flares fell out. <laughs> well, I say flares, I don't just mean flares, I mean... <gasps> <laughs> Even more than that. I thought I'd put them on, get back to the 70s. 
And he's still fit, almost. Checked him out in the mirror. <laughs> I thought I'll go out in him. Then I thought, no, I won't. I'll go far out in him. <laughs> eh? Down to the newsagents. Took me a long time to get there. It was windy. You know? <laughs> Have you had the flowers? You had to have the shades as well. And I certainly had the shades. Yes, I'm, I'm an avid collector of shades. 147 pairs I've got. Dig these. <laughs> Frames by Ray Ban. Lenses by Lucasade. <laughs> 147 pairs. But I've only brought two to show you. Here's my most precious pair of shades. The sort of remnants of the hippie era. <laughs> are these cool or are these cool? <laughs> and it's, because they're so precious, I keep them locked up at home. Until recently, a friend, a friend said, don't be such a fool, Phil. Don't keep them locked up like that. Take them out. Enjoy them. <laughs> I thought, no. And then I thought, yeah, why not? And so I did. And now I realise just some of the hassle that blind people have got to put up with. <laughs> Mind, Amanda, let the gentleman pass. <laughs> and of course I got the classic. Does he take sugar? <laughs> and so I just had to retaliate by grabbing a cane from the nearest rubber plant and go tip-tapping across the road, the high street at rush hour. <laughs> Over to a line of parked cars <coughs> Felt the number plates. No, this one isn't mine. <laughs> Put those glasses back in my collection safely, please. Yeah. Uh, when you think about it, we're, we're a nation of collectors. And some of the some of the oddest things we collect. Dust. <laughs> Coins. Stamps. <laughs> Stamps. How, how, I mean, how can anybody get worked up about a little piece of gummed paper? <laughs> but they do, once one glimpse of a penny black and they're into an orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, it's priceless. Oh, oh, oh. Blue lips. <laughs> yeah. Now, some collectors use detectors. Hello. This particular beach happens to be a landing site once used by ancient seafaring travellers. Who knows? I might just detect a long-lost treasure, once belonging to Simbad himself. <laughs> or even an Anglo-Saxon Bethlax. <laughs> it might even be yes a pirate's ring Paul it's 39 today <laughs> Fascinating character, as indeed are most collectors. For instance, 
My good friend Elton John collects old pianos. Whereas my old mucker Ronnie Reagan collects new organs. <laughs> my extra special mate, George Harrison, he collects sitars. Whereas Bill Wyman, he collects baby sit uh, <laughs> bass guitars. Another old show business friend of mine collects modern art. You've probably seen him wearing it. And to describe him as being loud would be like trying to describe Venice as being damp. His middle name, Good Times, suggests that he just might give you one. So we have to welcome the outrageously flamboyant George Melly. Like the suit. Yes, so do I, Michael. Perhaps you could, do, you could describe it for us. I think the suit speaks for itself, Michael. Lovely. You see, this is going to be more difficult than Mohammed Ali Mitchum, an emu, all rolled into one. Um, jo George, uh, you are, aren't you? It, it has been said, hasn't it? And correct me if I'm wrong in saying, but you, you, you are, aren't you? Uh, a great lover of uh, modern art. Yes, Michael. So long as it's post-modernist cubism fused with pointillism symbolizing the oblique intuitiveness of Bryce. <laughs> Coining the best in pre-Raphaelite expressionism. Right. Um, George, um, how would you... Uh, how, would, how would you define jazz? Define jazz? Now, that's a difficult one. Uh, now, let me see. Uh, may I stand up to do this? Be, be my guest. I'll sit down again now. Now, let me see. Define jazz. George is getting carried away there. Unfortunately, it'll never be far enough. But do join me in my next one-to-one, -one, which in actual fact will be one, two, three, when I'll be talking to Stock, Aitken and Waterman, who have done for popular music what that great horse Red Rum has done. The Roses. See you. Someone uh, bring them on for me, please. <laughs> the Barclay Cat. <laughs> Uh, 
I take it with me everywhere. And just where do you keep your flexible friend, old boy? Hi, coppers. I just come up from down under. Heck of a long way to swim. <laughs> I once asked a kangaroo to marry me. Said she didn't want to be tied down. <laughs> and I, I, I sort of, sort of collect um, unusual musical instruments like this little, little jews harp here. And the jews harp makes a wonderful sort of, sort of, sort of twangy, sort of noise. <laughs> Nice, eh? Uh, <laughs> Hello, Dolly, this is Rolf. Dolly, it's so nice to have you back where you belong. You're looking swell. Dolly, I can tell. Dolly, you're still blowing. You're still growing. You're still going strong. I feel the room <laughs> swaying and the bands <laughs> playing. <laughs> Did you like it? <laughs> Did you like it? <laughs> oh, and some musical instruments are said to possess strange supernatural forces, like, uh, like this Aboriginal. Did you read don't? <laughs> <clears throat> and when a full moon shines down on the bush and sort of sort of lights up the entire stylophone factory. <laughs> Remember stylophones. <laughs> Anybody ever buy one? Pratt. <laughs> anyway, legend has it that that he who sort of hits the right notes on it will sort of drift into dream time. Hope it doesn't work for me. I can't stand night nurse. <laughs> but here goes. Goodies held before you in the jukebox this week. Well, let's have a look, shall we? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Aha! Night. 
No more birthday slides for me to make you get up tonight. But I won't be moving on because a man can get frostbite from mooning. I'm mooning back into life. Do you remember? Yeah, the two of us. Sometimes I wonder just how many accidents we caused Mooning, just mooning into your life Yeah, the, um, the end. <laughs> 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 